Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can troubleshoot a Toshiba computer with an exiting PXE ROM error during boot up. Or maybe the screen goes black and all you can see is the blinking cursor in the corner. I'll show you how you can troubleshoot that now. Before we get going on the repair, one thing to shout out, the troubleshooting steps that I show you and the order that I show them to you in may not be the exact order you want to do them. For example, if you dropped your laptop and it had a physical hit, maybe your hard drive's loose. Maybe you want to try reseating it first. Or if you had a failed Windows update and then your computer had this problem, maybe you want to try the recovery, repair, or restore options. So just watch the video, check out the troubleshooting steps, and then use some common sense, try to figure out where you should start if one sounds better than the other. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is how to get into BIOS and check some settings there that may be affecting how BIOS is loading and then how Windows is loading. So power down your computer, I'll show you how to get into BIOS. Okay guys, so now that your computer is powered off, I'm gonna have you hit the power button and then immediately start tapping on F12. So power, start tapping on F12. For most Toshiba computers, it will be F12. If F12 doesn't work for you, try the other function keys because some models are different. But again, most will be F12. And you'll see a menu that will look something like this. So not all bio systems will look exactly the same, uh, but many will look somewhat similar to this. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is scroll down. Uh, some of you may have the use of your mouse as I do. Uh, if so, you can use that. If not, use your arrow keys or your tab keys. And if you can't find use of anything to navigate, try plugging in an external USB mouse. But I'm going to have you go down here to enter setup, hit enter. And the first thing we're going to troubleshoot is your system date and time up here. Make sure this system date and time is correct. If it's not correct, it could be affecting the way BIOS runs, which could also affect whether your Windows can boot up correctly or not. It sounds like a small thing, but it can really mess your computer up. So first thing you're going to do, make sure your system time and system date is correct. If it's not correct and you have to change it, change it, make it correct, hit save and exit down in the bottom right, and then try starting your computer up again. If this solves your problem and your computer starts normally after this, then great, you're all set. It could have just been a one-time error. If, however, you have to come back here every time you start your computer to change the system date and time because it's always incorrect, that could be a sign that your motherboard and BIOS is losing power when your computer turns off, which is not supposed to happen. There's a component on your motherboard called the CMOS battery that's supposed to maintain power to BIOS even when the computer's off. If you're having to change your system date and time every time you start your computer, it could be a sign that that component has died and it needs to be replaced. There'll be a video link below in the description showing you how to access a CMOS battery in your computer to replace it if that is the case. The next thing I'm going to have you change, guys, if this turns out to not be the issue, if you change your date and time, you save and exit, you try to restart your computer, and it still is having issues starting up, come back in here to BIOS, check your date and time. If the correct date and time was saved and the computer still can't boot up, we know that's not the issue. The next thing I'm going to have you check, come down to your bottom left under advanced. We'll click on that. And then down here, you see the word diagnostic. Again, not all BIOS systems are the same. You may have to look around your BIOS, your different tabs, uh, main, security, power management. You may have to click on these and look around, but try to find it right here where it says diagnostic. That's what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now that we're in the diagnostic utility, you'll see two different tests, a hard drive or solid state drive. Sometimes you'll see that referred to as storage. It's the same thing. And then you'll see a memory test. Try running both of these, more specifically your hard drive, solid state drive, or your storage. Run that test. Um, this way it'll diagnose whether your hard drive is healthy or not, which is a very common reason for the issue you're seeing where your computer's not booting up. So when you run this diagnostic scan, there are three main possible outcomes, and I'll tell you what you can do in each situation. So the first situation is your hard drive passes the test and shows up as healthy. In that case, we know the hard drive's good. We'll move on to the next diagnostic step, which is most likely either BIOS or the operating system. The other two possible outcomes, whether the hard drive fails the test 
or it says the hard drive is uninstalled or it can't see it or unavailable or something so it can't run the test. In this case, the hard drive could be bad and may need to be replaced or it could have just come loose. So this is gonna be another troubleshooting step. It's called reseeding the hard drive. We're gonna unplug it and plug it back in, make sure that it's secure. I'll have a video link above, also below in the description, showing you a general tutorial on how you can access a hard drive and reseed it. If you can't figure out from that tutorial how to get into your particular computer, leave me a comment with your brand and your model number, and I can help you get at your hard drive. If after reseeding the hard drive, it's still failing the test or it's still saying unavailable or it can't run it or uninstalled, then you kind of know your hard drive's bad. It should be replaced. If that's your situation and you do need to replace your hard drive, um, consider upgrading to a solid state drive. They're faster, they break less often, but there'll be video links below in the description on how to install Windows 10 or Windows 11 onto the drive after you install a new one. But again, going back to that first option, if your hard drive was healthy and you need to keep troubleshooting, we'll continue now. At this point, guys, try to look around your BIOS. Again, not all BIOS are the same. Yours may not look like mine. You may have to look around a little bit, but try to find any restore options or repair options in BIOS. Look through your tabs, try to find those. If it is an operating system issue, sometimes you can repair it by using those options. If those options don't work or if you can't find anything, there's one more thing that we can rule out in BIOS. We're gonna exit this test. We're gonna hit close. Now we're back at our main screen in BIOS. Another thing I'm gonna have you check in BIOS, it's, it's a last thing we'll look for. I'm gonna come down to my advanced tab on the left. And then on the right, I'll come down to system configuration and hit enter. And then I'm gonna go all the way down to here where it says boot mode, UEFI boot, Again, just like before, you may need to look around your tabs to find this, uh, but in my computer, it's on, under the Advanced tab. Um, here, you'll see UEFI boot, you may see Legacy, um, but you'll see one of those options. Basically, your computer can be set to either. If your computer is unable to boot, what you would wanna do is you'd wanna change this from whatever it is to whatever it's not. So if you're seeing Legacy boot as the setting that you have in place, you wanna change that to UEFI save and exit, try booting the computer up. In my case, it says UEFI boot. I would try to save it to legacy, save and exit and boot. If you're like me and this option is grayed out, meaning I can't click on this and change it. So you can't change it from UEFI to legacy or you can't change it from legacy to UEFI because it's grayed out. You have to go back in, explore these tabs and find out where the secure boot is enabled. I know that if I go into my security tab on the left, you'll see it here, secure boot, and it's been enabled. So that's what you would be looking for, the secure boot option. You would then click on this, disable it, and then you'll be able to change that from UEFI to legacy or from legacy to UEFI. Once you're able to do that, guys, save and exit, try starting the computer up again. If that doesn't work, then we've kind of ruled out a lot of things in BIOS that it could be safe to say your BIOS is okay. I did forget to mention one thing you can do specifically for those of you who had a failed Windows update before this whole situation started. Try to also find an option in BIOS that says uninstall last update. Not all BIOS will have that, but if you know specifically that you had a failed update right before this started, it's worth looking around BIOS very thoroughly, trying to find an option to uninstall last update. Sometimes that can bail you out of this issue. But at this point in the video, assuming everything has failed, we know the date and time is correct, your hard drive passed the test, um, none of the restore repair options worked in BIOS. If, if nothing has worked, we've kind of identified it as your operating system. So at this point, guys, I would reinstall your operating system. Whether you wanna do Windows 10 or Windows 11, there'll be video links below in the description showing you how you can reinstall that for free on a Toshiba computer. Just remember after installing a new operating system to run all the updates through, I'll also have a video link below in the description showing you how you can process all those updates. So that's the troubleshooting process that I use in my shop. I hope you're able to rearrange those or even do them in the order that I suggested them. I'm hoping you can fix your problem. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. I do try to keep those updated and it could save you some time getting an answer. Um, if you do need to leave me a question or comment, feel free. I do try to get to those as often as I can. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.